Right, I'll be coming with them beats in the beginning before we transition. He be coming with that with that sauce. I almost gave y'all a little sixteen before we came back, but now nah, we ain't gonna do that, man. Cause I don't know how to keep it PG, man. We on we on the FM right now. We ain't gonna do that right here. But for sure though, man, y'all already know what's going on. It's your boy YTS on the beat, man. I'm here with my boy. Uh, I'm here with my brother, Big Dog. You feel me? Brian Stenson to the um left of me, but you know we got this last interview today. You feel me? We got a lot of great people that came in and talked to us today, but. We got this last guest, man, and I feel like he gonna come with something different, you feel me? Definitely gonna come with something different, and his name is Gangsta Genius, you feel me? So, how you doing today, my brother? I'm doing awesome, and you too? Man, doing great. We didn't talk to a lot of great artists today, man. We've been hearing a lot of great music, so we in store for your music today. So, first off, I, first I want to say thank you for coming in, you feel me? Coming in no problem. And stuff like thank that, you all man. for having me, so uh, I'm just here to chop a little game or whatever, and uh Bring some east side Oakland to Chicago. Oh, so. yeah. See, that's what I'm talking about. He bringing that energy already. That's what I like. So. People that bring the energy. You feel me? That's the best interviews when people come bring the energy. So you say east Oakland. Yep. I, the, I grew up there in Chicago and Memphis, part of my childhood. So mm. I got Panthers in my family, too. So, uh, so um, what... Um, what state did you stay in? Like, what city did you stay in the most? Is, was it Oakland or Chicago? Well, um, it was a little bit of all of them because um, when my parents were married or whatever, and you know, the more you learn about God, you see this um, Satan have to attack people' marriages and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And so my mother was married to my stepfather, so Satan was doing what God keep him on the payroll to do. So that's how I ended up moving from Chicago out to Oakland or whatever, and then to Memphis or whatever. Then I came back to Chicago oh, man, when that's... I was still in high school or whatever. Oh, but that's kind of good. Well, it's not. It's good. It got its benefits at the same time because you. I mean, you known in multiple places. You feel me? That mean you know a little bit of everything. You feel me? That's good though. You don't just be in one spot all the time. You feel because me? I'm a music producer, so they allow me to like see the gangster rap stuff going on in Memphis and other stuff or whatever as well. It's like what was happening with rap a lot and all the other stuff and sports stuff too. So, oh, for sure. So I had a chance to see Shaq when he was down at LSU and all that stuff. So if I would have been up here, there's a lot of stuff I would have missed out on. So God did it for a reason. For sure. God always do everything for a reason. You feel me? We, we might not know at that moment, but it's always a reason behind it. It's always a reason. Right. So talk to me about this name, man, Gangsta Genius, man. How did you end up coming up with that? Interesting you asked me that. Um, my mother, well, I come from a super smart family, not to be bragging or anything, but um, my grandfather, he built B.B. King first amplifier down in Memphis. Mm. And people would fly to Memphis. My grandfather died undefeated. Just like nobody ever beat me battling in hip hop and rap. My grandfather died undefeated because he was a checkers champion and people was flying into Memphis from all around the world to play him and was losing. So I come from a super smart family or whatever. And I've been a straight A student my whole life and stuff like that. I'm not the average artist where you just want to get fame and you give your publishing and other stuff away. You know, I come from a super smart family and my stage name, it comes from my mother. My mother calls herself, my mother Mary the gun. She calls herself the genius. So, and oh, I'm also a 49er fan. So, um, they call Bill Walsh the genius. So my half of my stage name come from my mom and Bill Walsh of the 49er team. And the other half come from where I grew up at, where I was born at over there, where the GD started at, over in Inglewood. That's where the gangster part come from. Mm, for sure. So, like, how long have you necessarily been making music, though? Since maybe, um, I've been writing songs since I was maybe like five or six years old. Because my, it was kind of like growing up in my household, it was kind of like, my my older brother played guitar. So it was kind of like we was Motown kids. And maybe like my brother don't be laughing. It was kind of like my brother was signed to Motown. 
or something like that or whatever because we were songwriting when we was like little kids and things of that nature. And so that's what leads to the enemy and things of that nature or whatever, writing the greatest song ever. Was my brother sitting up doing this Motown songwriting classes with me and my other brothers and sisters when we, because he's the oldest. So that was his job because he could have been gangbanging or doing something wrong and things of that nature. And that's why God blessed him for doing the right thing because now his brother has wrote the greatest song ever that probably nobody will ever top. And my managers at work like, you're about to become a star because I've never heard a song that's that good. And I'm like, but I wrote the song like almost like 20 years ago, but I just been performing it at different like clubs and churches and other places and stuff like that because I invented like gospel hip hop too. And Kanye stole his style from me because he, he was just rapping about like getting money and stuff like that, like Puffy and the people he was messing with was doing. He stole that Jesus Walk song from my swagger because I met him and they wanted, they was calling my manager trying to get me to come record on the album and things of that nature because his crew, they said that I was better than him. So, and, and it's because I am. So, because I'm probably the greatest songwriter ever. And I was writing like, R&B songs and pop songs and all that stuff growing up and things of that nature. So, but I just focus strictly on like mastering hip hop or whatever, because hip hop allowed more flexibility for me to write a song like the enemy or why is thou forsaking me and things of that nature or whatever. So, and because I'm a big Prince fan and things of that nature, it had being a singer has more limitations than being hip hop. So, and that allowed me to, write a song that Prince inspired, Prince 1999 inspired me to write Prince 1999 and also um, what was the other song he had um, with his father, I'm trying to think of it, it will come to me or whatever, but yeah, Prince 1999, that was the main song because I was just getting into music and I was like uh, Prince probably like the first person I was listening to and things of that nature on the radio and things of that nature or whatever, so and his music was like, because I have a calling into the ministry and things of that nature and, and Prince music. Being a Prince fan was really easy because his music is so inspirational. And he was doing messages to God at the end of the um, Purple Rain album and all this stuff. So it was real easy to be a Prince fan and things of that nature because he was always talking about God and his music and things of that nature. And it allowed me to like, do the same thing and then being a fan of KRS and rock him and all of them and Kooji rap and all of them people and things of that nature or whatever. So it's all like been a good dynamic to have. So, but yeah, my stage name come from my mom and um, also Bill Walsh. This is your radio, Brian Stinson, YTS Keys, man. Got the homie, man. Gangsta Genius in the building, man. So you brought by this single called... Y'all the mean, y'all the mean. Got, you brought by this single called The Enemy, man. Uh, what was the inspiration behind it, and what should we definitely get and take away from it? Um, the inspiration behind The Enemy was a lot of things happening with Aaliyah death and all kind of other stuff happening. And also... Um, Marvin Gaye, like even though he's from my parents' generation and things of that nature, we wouldn't have, I look at the whole picture of, if you look at uh, people like even Johnny Gill come from ministry background. Also, Marvin Gaye come from ministry background. Also, the Point Sisters come from ministry background. And we would have been robbed of this great music if their parents had killed them, like Marvin Gaye, dad did, because he didn't want him to be into the world and probably get hooked on drugs like one of the point of sisters was and all that stuff or whatever. So when I look at all of that, and that's why I wrote the enemy and things of that nature, and God was talking to me and things of that nature. And 50 Cent inspired the hook. That's why the hook is unstoppable. Nobody ever write a hook better than that. Don't be smiling. But 50 Cent inspired the hook, and he can't even write that song <laughs> or whatever because he's gangster rapper. But 50 Cent inspired that hook because whenever people killing music and it, and 50 Cent probably is the best person at writing hooks in hip hop ever. And he inspired me to write that hook. 
even though he can write it. And yeah, the enemy, like a lot of things, like uh, like murders and deaths happening and things of that nature around the world that was happening to black people and white people and all that stuff or whatever inspired me to write that song. And also, um, I worked in child care and stuff like that or whatever. And, um, and Tuka, the, uh, Tuka is my godson. That's the one who Chief Keith and all them make all these songs about and all that. That's my godson. He's not even in. in. I wrote the enemy like before he even died. So it's been a lot of stuff happening around me and all that stuff or whatever. So, but the song was what it was and it covered all the things. It covered like everybody or whatever. Even if it was people that deaths happened after the enemy, the enemy still covered for all of those people or things of that nature or whatever. And even the woman throwing the kids off the Bay Bridge and all that stuff. All that stuff was like really traumatic because I had a call in into the ministry. So all of that stuff like really like um, kind of bothered me. I worry about the world. Well, let's jump into it, man. It's the homie Gangsta Genius, man. The enemy is in your ears right now. It's Fusion Radio, Brian Stinson, YTS Keys. Stop says, if they're your enemies, they're my enemies. God, give me the words. I got my pen. Living in this world, things is getting dim. Kids are killing kids, parents killing babies. It's crazy. We're living in the last days, maybe. Bush shot down his house. I think he did. OPD, great Nina, two times in her crib. Malice Gray was killed by Detroit police. Yummy Santa for die in these cold, hardy streets. So a nigga killed two. I need to injection. People jumping off the Bay Bridge because of depression. Jam after J. Took one to the dome. John Lennon got killed right in front of his home. Roger Trotter was murdered by his brother like Abel. That Columbia shuttle crashed because the wing was unstable. Felix Mitchell was killed in jail by Ronald Reagan. Latasha was killed by a storm club that was Asian. Easy died of AIDS. So the slim was sprayed. For Hampton died in the box police raid. Saddam at the high. Look how Marvin Gaye died. And all of this supposed to instill American pride. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Where I pray every night over again Lord protect me from these wicked hearted men Who plan to plot my downfall but can't win Only you know my triumphs and my sins The people that I help, the dope spots I've been Please guide me through this war that I'm in The front line of my mind, let's begin Violence is American, it's apple pie, that's why H. Rap Brown was convicted of lies I try Not to cry when I think of left eye and Aaliyah Scott a rock, rapper run, I know I'ma see ya Tsunami victims still missing, steady in prison Mooney you getting, set up by a racist system What about the Columbine killers with Eric and Dylan? It ain't about racist, this old world is killing That's why I pray for Trevante, Josh, and Troy One by one, mama threw them away in the bay She said she heard the Lord, I don't doubt it it was already written, just couldn't do nothing about it. Scott Peterson killed his wife when I'm born. Huey Newton was killed by the government because he was conformed. Virgin Mary statues crying in Cali. See, Durant got killed for his joy and left in the alley. He's too much pain to take. Brian Harris was raped, and they blamed two little boys, seven and eight. So much violence and so little time. So much crime, justice must be blind. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. This is why I pray every night over again. Lord, protect me from these wicked hearted men who plan to plot my downfall but can't win. Only you know my triumphs and my sins. The people that I help, the dope spots I've been. Please guide me through this war that I'm in. The front line of my mind, let's begin. Peace can only happen by a violent means to seem strength in numbers. We not working as teams, no man the island, I was the dream of king. But coin tail pro kept it from being seen. Here bar go to Cuba, locking up Larry Hoover. What made a boy 17 into a sniper shooter? Another case of chickens coming home to roost. Violence afraid of violence. Y'all don't wanna get the truth. We fighting against each other. When our enemies the same, Al Qaeda, Panthers they claim in every street gang, nation of Islam, and the Aryan Brotherhood, black gorilla family. I think my point is understood. Let no man separate. What God create, it's been a long time, but it was worth the wait. We've been forced fear, hate by United Snakes. No pun intended, but it's about to blow up in their face. A lot who walk far, that means God is great. Know who you are, no matter what the race. 
Only then can we truly be embraced. Change your mindset. Don't have time to wait. The enemy, my enemy, is my friend. This is why I pray every night over again. Lord, protect me from these wicked hearted men who plan and plot my downfall but can't win. Only you know my tribes and my sins. The people that I help, the dope spots I've been. Please guide me through this war that I'm in, the front line of my mind. Let's begin the enemy. And remember, the compliments come from confidence, so keep God first and haters last. Yada. Got the homie Gangster Genius in the building with Fusion Radio with Brian Stetson and YTS Case, man. You just heard the single, yada, The yada, Enemy. Yada. Uh, so, man, like, uh, you actually got an upcoming project, man, for people to build on here in that single, The Enemy. It's entitled uh, Saving My Shells for a Rainy Day, man. Um, man, what was the, the, the whole, like, um, I guess you could say process and settling on that name? That name seems like it has a special meaning for the project. It do, because um, it's about the racial holy war, Rahoa. So that's why it's called that. So, and if we don't work together and things of that nature and stuff like that to make this world better and things of that nature. Because it's about, I have Black Panthers in my family, stuff like that, but it's about everybody uniting. The Black Panthers, the Ku Klux Klan, everybody. Total unity across the board to make this world better for everybody. No doubt. So, listening to that song, The Enemy, you feel me, is like, you talked about a lot of controversial things and you talked about a lot of like real things. So like, is that your style? Like, is, is that how you approach all your music? No, I'm number 33. Number 33 means I'm versatile. That's Scotty Pippen number. That's Ronnie Lott number. That's Magic Johnson number when he was in high school. You gotta always be versatile. I got a song with, um, Cause I'm a two live crew fan. A lot of people don't know this, but remember I live down south, so I'm a huge two live crew. Two live crew is my favorite group. I got a song that's gonna be on my album. That's with Mr. Mix from Two Live Crew. So nothing limiting about my music. When people buy my album, they gonna be blown away by everything, everything. And I produce over 20 different styles of music, from house music all the way to southern bass. Everything. That's what I'm talking about. So the whole album going to be versatile. So even though I can do the KRS like style and stuff like that or whatever about politics and other stuff or whatever, the whole album going to be vers completely versatile on every level. So you're going from the enemy all the way to money shot by with um, Mr. Mix. So that's two different levels all the way. So this is nobody in Chicago can even say they can produce a Southern style like Mr. Mix style. I can produce Mr. Mix style. That's why I produced it and he got on the song because I'm the only producer that can do it. Babyface and Teddy Riley and all of them and Kanye and them, none of them can do it. And it's a hit song. People heard it. Everybody at work and everyone else, they heard it. They love the song money shot too. So I got every. Thing that's happening out here is gonna be on my saving my shelf for a rainy day album. It's just gonna be a album. Of, it's not gonna be no dark album. It's just an album about like having fun, enjoying life, and things of that nature, whatever. But still remembering that is other things that we need to be doing to make this world better too. So. WIIT Chicago. Chicago. 88.9 FM Fusion Radio. So, <clears throat> how many songs going to be on this album? It's probably going to be a double album. Mm -hmm. So, yep, the way it's heading because um, I have some reggae songs and other stuff or whatever that I'm going to put on here and things like that. That's why nobody's going to ever top this out. Not the album cover with all of these great political figures and, and, and hood figures and things like that, they're not going to top the album cover or the album. It's going to be a double album with everything on there. All my music production. It's only a couple of songs that's on there that somebody else did or whatever that like this, um, the acoustic guitar player played on, um, that, um, you have everything when you have Christ. He produced that. He didn't, that he, it's only a couple of songs on there, like two or three songs that I didn't produce. 
everything else, my production. It's going to be the greatest album ever. And people that, uh, people is going to be the most anticipated album to come up in the next few years because I'm not a rapper. I'm a lyricist. So all my stuff makes sense. But I don't have to do, I can do gangster rap all the way to political rap, like the end. I could do, I can rap about my Rolex watch and all of that stuff and all that little meaningless stuff that some of these people be doing all the way to the end. So that's why my album is going to be the most versatile album ever. And Sir Mix a lot is the first person to do that with that Swaz. So he put a lot of pressure on me to top Swaz. Because Swaz has songs on there or whatever. But for every like group of people, it has songs on there. For dudes who like to hang around me, he got songs on there for that. He got everything on there. That album has every different thing on there. He got gangster songs on there. All kinds of stuff. And that's why my album has to top that album. As far as versatility, that, that and I love that Run DMC album and stuff like that or whatever, the Raising Hill and stuff like that or whatever. But as far as like Run DMC, don't have all the stuff that Mix a lot had on that album. And I have to top that album. I'm not going to let him be. And so my album is going to be the most versatile array of music from any one artist that produced, right and arrange. Prince can't do this album. I produce house music. Prince don't produce house. Everything. Every style of music. I produce gangster rap. Everything. And I can feature on gangster rap. I'll feature on gangster rap people's songs. Song I did in high school called uh, Murder by Mark. That was a hit. Everybody was riding around in the neighborhood in the city trying to get my tape. Because a song I wrote about my friend Taiwan who got killed. That's a gangster rap song. I was sitting up there at his, getting ready for his funeral, sitting up there watching the box and watching Pox, Brenda Gallo Baby, and God was talking to me. While I was sitting there watching Brenda's Gallo Baby, I was like, oh, I'm going like, to write this song about my friend getting killed. And Brenda's Gallo Baby inspired me to write that song, Murdered by Mark, and that song is going to be on my album too because I was winning talent shows. I'm the first person to win talent shows at colleges and was winning financial awards. I'm not no dummy. I come from, I call myself the genius and my mama calls herself the genius because we come from a super smart family. My cousin down in Memphis was almost the top high school in the world is in Memphis. It's called Whitehaven. That's how smart my family is. Not to be bragging, but my cousin, she was almost valedictorian of Whitehaven. You only missed by a couple of points. So let's you know, talk about, man, um, a tentative date as to when the project's going to drop and then follow that up, man. Uh, what's uh, on your bucket list? You want to talk about your upcoming clothing lines, man. So talk to us about both of those things. Album should be dropping in February 24, 2024. So I've still got some things I got to finish or whatever, a few little songs and stuff. So February 2024. All right, and then uh, this, these clothing lines, man, give us the name of the clothing lines and what was the inspiration behind uh, birthing them? Uh, both of them, um, Dope Quotes is kind of like what you hear at the end of that song, The Enemy. So God gave me that. Um, and my mom is like the greatest rhyme I ever. I'm so jealous of her. But she can like rhyme and be bragging about stuff and things of that nature. So, But yeah, the Dope Quotes clothing line, it's a um, clothing line that's going to have quotes of things like compliments come from confidence and uh, keep God first and hate us last, as well as other quotes that I created or my mom created or whatever that's going to be on there to inspire people. And the Balsa brand is going to be like um, Polo or like Sean John. We're going to have jeans and um, coats and everything else and all that stuff and blouses and dresses and everything else. All right, so outside of that, man, you also, man, you out here working, man. You got an upcoming book, man. Talk to us about the title of it and, um, you know, what should we get from this upcoming book? The name of the book is named at the same thing as one of the clothing lines. It's called Dope Quotes. So God told me to like, um, the book comes from Boogie Down Productions, Scholar Rock. And uh, thank you, God, and thank you, Scholar Rock, for, like, using him to, 
talk through me. Because um, I started keeping quotes in the 80s because of Scholar Rock. Scholar Rock, the criminal-minded quote in Word of Magazine, made me start keeping quotes. So I've been keeping quotes for like about 30 or 40 years too. And that's where the dope quote book come from. Leading, it, led, it led from the Scholar Rock quote about everything is criminal-minded and you have to think criminal-minded in order to survive all the way up to compliments come from confidence. And then, yeah, so. and then I also see, man, upcoming movie, man, about your life, man. Yep. Well, uh, it's called My Testimony is My Story Only. Everything I do rhymes because I'm probably the greatest rhyme I ever. So, yep, I'm going to be doing a movie about my life, about, like, all the things I went through and things of that nature because I do poetry and everything else and stuff, and all this stuff going to be on my album, too. So, um my key, my kids' mother, she cousins were common and all that stuff or whatever. So all this stuff is prophecy. So all this stuff go be in my book and things of that nature, or whatever in my movie. So looking forward to. So and then we got to definitely talk about your love for sports because I know, uh, man, when we talked in the past, man, it was different programs that you were working towards to start for the youth, man, to get them involved, man. So just you know, chime in on that, man, because you know I'm always, man, you know, uh, pro. Uh, having programs for the youth, things that they enjoy to do? Well, kind of even with um, my school, I'm going to be starting and things of that nature or whatever, because I hate to be sounding like I'm bragging and stuff like that or whatever, so I don't really tell a lot of people. A lot of people don't know all this stuff about me and things of that nature, but when I was in high school and stuff or whatever, remember, probably the greatest lyricist ever. I was coaching, I coached my division to a basketball championship in high school. Because God always, like, was talking to me through sports and things of that nature. And that's kind of like my burning bridge as, as far as God talking through me. And that's how I became, like, a big Scottie Pippen and Grant Hill fans and things of that nature or whatever, too. And found out that I'm a 33 through God talking through them. And also Magic Johnson and all Magic Johnson community service and things of that nature, too. Because he wore number 33 in college, too. So, and also Kareem, who just sold his rings and all that stuff. He's number 33, too. So, sports has always been, and I coach the um, basketball team when I worked in child care at the YMCA down on, like, um, 50th in Indiana. I coached them to the championship, too. So, i always been coaching the things of that nature, basketball and football and things of that nature or whatever. So, and so sports has always, like, been a big part of, my life and things of that nature, and I try to share it with everybody else so that that way they can see beyond just um, just scoring and other stuff and things of that nature and see the camaraderie of Scottie Pippen, like making sure carrying Jordan when he really needed it. When the man was down with the flu and all that, Scottie Pippen carried him. And that's what Jesus do. That's what Jesus was doing to us. Jesus was carrying us like Scottie Pippen was carrying Jordan. Show, That's a 33 doing what he was supposed to do. He was carrying that man when he was down and had the flu and was sick or he was lying about or whatever. But Scotty Pippen carried him and did whatever he had to do to try to make sure that his teammate was where he needed to be. And so you see that with Magic and also with all his community work and all that stuff. So it's a way bigger picture. So. And that's why I've always been big on sports and things of that nature. And also Ronnie Lott being a 49er and stuff like that or whatever, and my coach being a revolutionary. My coach is a revolutionary. So thinking outside the box and putting run, having Ronnie Locke catching passes and all that stuff, the stuff that Walter Payton should have been doing here in Chicago, and he's the greatest running back ever, but our coach was doing that because he's a, my coach was a revolutionary, so that's where I come from. For so, sure, man. So before we get up out of here, just get a peep of your social medias and stuff like that so they can follow you and get up with your movement. Um, Facebook and um, Instagram. Darren, uh, cousin Darren Harris. Both pages. So, And they also can, um, if they want to order clothes and things of that nature, the um, dope quotes clothing. And also for the, because um, I got people who want to order the um also the t shirts and hoodies of the album cover and things of that nature because the album cover is so dope 
So if people want to order those too, they can order them too from you, things of that nature. We still getting the websites together. For sure, man. It was a great conversation with you. Thank you for coming in. And it was I just good wanna, talking to you guys. And I want to thank everybody that's been listening to Fusion Radio today, man. We had a lot of great guests in on with us. And we had a lot of great conversations. So we just hope that y'all stay tuned in with us. And we're going to keep doing our thing every Saturday and every Friday for y'all, man. Love.